See, the thing is, people come to me and say, I'm getting divorced, and I say, fantastic. And they say, why? What do you mean fantastic? It seems like such a sad thing. And the answer is, I never heard of a fabulous relationship that ended in divorce. <laughs> when, when a divorce has come, it's a resolution of an untenable situation. A relationship that had gone past its, its expiry date. Every relationship must have some kind of expiry date. Maybe it's 50 years. Maybe it's 70 years. I met a couple once who were in their 90s uh, who had been married for more than 70 years. And they explained to me they were getting divorced. And I said, why? And they said, well, we waited for uh, probably 60 years until our young son grew up and became an old man and died of old age. <laughs> because we didn't want... To. We didn't want our son to uh, have the bad news that his parents were getting divorced. I said, you waited 60 years? They say, oh, we wanted to get divorced 60 years ago, but now that our son is dead, uh, we're able to do so with no guilt. See, the thing is, marriage is supposed to bring us happiness. <laughs> and if we're growing in happiness and growing in the ability to enjoy shared experience, then the marriage has some relevance. When the marriage has no longer that relevance, then it may be time for us to examine other possibilities and continue to uh, extract from the alliance, you still have an alliance even if the marriage isn't there, extract from the alliance all the best things that it could possibly provide, including friendship. A lifetime of friendship could still be there. After all, you didn't get married for no reason. And so then, why not see what you can salvage from the alliance and let the style of the relationship change from you being married to you no longer having to wake up at the same address every day. And if you've achieved that, that's a great achievement. Now it's time to get back into the present moment. Instead of living a life of regret, oh, this was the thing, and I promised everybody in my family at the wedding that we were going to be together forever, and it's only been three months and now we're divorced. <laughs> you know, um, well, you know, what am I going to do? And the children and the children... My experience is the children are usually relieved. If they're not relieved yet, wait until they're over the age of 20 and they talk to you and they'll tell you they're very relieved that the two of you finally found a way to stop fighting. And so, you know, the bad part of the relationship is you're, you're past it. Now it's time to live in the present moment. And to get into that present moment consciousness, you have to meditate twice a day. And not just any old meditation like, you know, the iPhone app meditation. <laughs> if you're going to bother meditating, you know, it takes some time to do it. You might as well learn from an expert. Learn from an expert. I or one of my colleagues, and I have many colleagues I've trained who can teach you, who are experts in how to take the mind out of the field of thinking and into the bliss of being. The fact is, right now, my listener, my viewer, you, at your baseline, are nothing but an ocean of bliss. But you've forgotten it because you're too busy thinking, 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 thinking. Oh, what if this had been done? What if that had been done? What if I'd seen this coming? What if I had cho chosen not to marry the person in the first place? <laughs> what if I had married the other goofball who would probably have made me happy? And all of that. Yeah, this, too much thinking. We need to come out of the field of thinking and experience being. When you experience being during Vedic meditation, 20 minutes twice a day, you practice morning and evening, then what happens is you get into the habit of that present moment awareness. The present moment actually is right now trying to yield to you bliss experiences, but you're rejecting them. And on what basis are you rejecting? 
you're all wrapped up in thinking about this and that and everything, all the repercussions and what, who said what to whom and who did what and who was sneaky and who didn't tell the truth and how it all came about and what is there now and blah, blah, blah. And the world is trying to give you bliss right now. But you're too busy thinking about the non-bliss. <laughs> so to come out of that bad habit, meditation twice every day, meditation twice every day. And then if you're already practicing Vedic meditation twice a day, if you're practicing some waste of time meditation, then I can't really give you much advice. But if you're practicing Vedic meditation and you're experiencing transcendence, that bliss of being, then come out of the meditation, walk outside, look around at the trees, look around at the birds, look at the beautiful sky sparkling there. Maybe it's sparkling with rain, maybe it's sparkling with blueness. Maybe the environment is just there and take a moment and let the blissfulness of it all come to you. Let it come to you, let it get to you. Let it awaken, let it resonate with that deep inner place inside you. And let go of all the thoughts about the misery of the past. You know, now you're living in the present and the present is attempting to deliver bliss to you. Don't backhand the bliss away in favor of rolling around in the mud of misery. It's a waste of time. You're breathing so many breaths every day and you know, this physical machine, it can only breathe a certain number of breaths in a lifetime. So why are we wasting time? Uh, every minute that goes by, every second that goes by, one moment gone. And there's no power on earth that can bring that back to you. Nothing can bring it back to you. You could lose a billion dollars and with a bit of creativity, you could get a billion back again. You lose one moment, nothing brings it back. So let's stop wasting time and rolling around in the ever repeating known, the mud of the past, and let's get into the liberation of the present. Live life in bliss, awaken the bliss inside you through regular twice a day practice of Vedic meditation, and then uh, radiate life for all to enjoy. And that will reflect back to you manifold. This is the way life works. Hmm.